Let us open our Bibles today, friends, in the book of Exodus, chapter 20. I'm reading from the King James Version Bible. In our day right now, in our times, we are being misled, we are being misdirected, manipulated by the medias, by the mu movies, by music. All around the world, we are engulfed with the deception. So the better sure or the sure word of prophecy is what we need to look into today. That's why I'd like us to be directed to the Old Testament powerful uh, narrative here in Exodus. Um, and I would like to specifically point you out to Exodus chapter 20. The King James Version Bible has this to say. And God spoke, spake all these words, saying, this opening statement, friends, of chapter 20 and verse 1 of Exodus gives us a glimpse that the source of this is God. The Bible does not need to prove that there is God. The Bible writes confidently, surely that there is a God. No human beings, no scientists could ever declare that there is no God unless he understands that the Bible is powerful enough to say that there is a God, assuming the power that there is one God who created us. And God spake all these words saying, so this is very important. These are very important words, friends, because right now, as we are being diluted, being deceived, being um, misdirected by by the governments, by the, uh, by the people around who call themselves experts, authorities, they are not the truth, friends. The truth comes from the Word of God. And I would like you to... Uh, listen to the words in verse number 2, Exodus chapter 20, King James Version. I continue. I am the Lord thy God, which had brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Friends, we are walking the similar path of God's people in the old times, now played out in the postmodern times, just before He is about to come, or Jesus is about to come as He will fulfill His promise. Now, what is the impact for all of us as I read through, we read through this, this uh, important passage in the, in the Scripture? Because the battlefield, friends, right now is in our minds, the seat of our decision-making. What should we do? Uh, what should we, what should we, our, where can we, where should we go? The, the decisions that are very important in our lives. So friends, the Bible tells us that God is the one who led His people out of Egypt to the house, out of the house of God to the promised land. So right now we are in Egypt. Right now we are in this um, bondage, slavery of this world. The, 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 the dark forces of this world is taking advantage and taking control and manipulate our minds. That's why there are so many confusion. That's why there are so many misdirections. And that's why people are not interested anymore with with the Word of God as, as uh, prophesied and as predicted by God's uh, writers as well. Verse number 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God is very clear, friends, that idolatry will play a very key role in deceiving the minds, the, the frontal love of, uh, of each and every one of us right now. There is no other gods, no other gods before, before the Holy One of Israel. Friends, there are so many gods that are playing out right now in our present world. The God of of money, the God of uh, selfishness, the God of uh, pleasure, the God. There are so many gods that are competing for our our attention and our imagination. But God declares there is no other God. God is God. God is just allowing us to be reminded today that there is no other powerful God than He is. So friends, let's take note of this first powerful words that, came, that comes out from the mouth of God. Thou shall have no other gods before me. It is a command, it is a calling in this time that we are about to uh, continue, that we are about to approach the uh, promised land, so to speak. Verse number 4, Thou shall not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath 
or that is in the water under the earth. Friends, very specific command from the mouth of God. But the problem is a powerful organization, the Roman Catholic Church, with all its tentacles, with all its uh, desire for supremacy to control the minds of billions of people, the Roman Catholic papal system would like to manipulate and deceive the whole world into believing that they have the authority from God, friends. The Bible gives us a glimpse that that command of the Roman Catholic Church not to obey the Bible or not to obey this, this word from the Lord is indeed deceitful. Because you know why? That Roman Catholic Church tells us to worship grieving image, tells us or commands us to, to worship the idols. But we know better because we have a sure word of prophecy and we have a sure word from the Word of God. Friends, the battle of the mind is the final battleground. Some people will just say, you know, this, this command is not applicable to them. This is from the words of God Himself who declared that this is His words. So whether you believe this or not, it's up to you. It's like, it's like choosing between who, who are you going to worship or who are you going to obey, whether it's God or the anti-God, whether it's the Messiah or the anti-Messiah, the Christ or the anti-Christ. Friends, this is very clear. We are being deceived by the most populous, most powerful, most potent organization the world has ever seen, the deadly wound, so to speak, as what the, the, the prophets have foreseen uh, and we are living it right now, the Roman Catholic papal system, they are enforcing, they will enforce subtle enforcing this commandment to make unto thee any grievance and worship it. But God said, do not make unto thee any grieving image or any likeness or anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is the uh, that is in the water under the earth thou shall not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for i the lord thy god am a jealous god visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation of them that hate me friends this is the words of god and i know there are, there have been many billions of people that have no idea no clue of what the word of god is telling them that's why they have been misdirected that's why they have been manipulated that's why they have been deceived that's why i'm calling out these verses today friends because i believe that our minds could 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 understand if we just read and we just under and we just give time to reflect on the Word of God, very important, because right now, the battlefield or the battleground, the final battleground is in our minds. The Bible continues to say, verse number 6, And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Verse number 7, friends, of Exodus chapter 20, verse, uh, verse number 7, as I, as I would like to read here, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take his name in vain. Friends, let us not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. This is a command for us because God's name is holy. We understand that God's name is the only one that can save us through Jesus Christ, His Son, the one who He sent so that we will be saved. Verse number 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This is the battleground right here in our present time because many people forget or billions of people had forgotten, majority of people had forgotten the Sabbath day to keep it holy. God says in verse number 9, Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God in it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Verse number 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. 
and rested the seventh day. Therefore, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. This command, friends, is from the words of God. This command, friends, is not from the words of men. This command is, is given to people not only for a specific ethnic group. This command was given to all those who are going out of the land of Egypt, so to speak, the land of bondage, the land of slavery towards the promised land. As I, as I have said before, it's just like right now we're experiencing that we are traveling, that we are in Egypt right now, so to speak, the world, and we are traveling, going to that heavenly promised land, and we are being asked by God to remember that He has a day, that He has this day that He has created for us to fellowship us, so that to fellowship with us so that He will be worshipped because in that day He ended His work, He rested, He blessed and He sanctified and He reminded us right now in this particular passage that indeed this was spoken by God. This is not just an ordinary, ordinary uh, writings, friends. This is this is the words of God. This is the commands from the mouth of God, whose whose mouth is the same who created us from out of nothing to existence. So God desires us to rest, to fellowship, to be holy people together in that specific day, the seventh day Sabbath, and the. The problem, friends, right now, because not many people understand that this is the final, final battleground for us, whether we believe or not, whether we obey or not, whether we keep the commandments of God or not. Friends, this is going to be the test of our loyalty and the test of our obedience to the Word of God. There are so many, there are so many scriptures in the Bible that backs this up. But I'm specifically just reading to you Exodus chapter 20 because this is from the mouth of God. This is not from the mouth of another supreme being because there is only one supreme being and that is God. And the other one is a false, is a, is a pretentious power that would like to usurp or take over the, the power and the sovereignty of God. Friends, the, Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath is the final battleground as well for our decisions, for our minds. Friends, take note right now. As we are, as we are approaching the holy, holy moments before we enter into the uh, heavenly home that God has promised for us in the scriptures, be reminded, be, be, be warned that this is going to be, this is, this commandment will going to be uh, desecrated, this will be openly disregarded, and those who keep the Sabbath will eventually be wiped out, but the God, but the God of heaven will eventually shelter those people and save those people who still keep His commandments, especially the Sabbath commandment, friends. The Bible tells us that the Sabbath day is the seal of God because it gives us the, the, uh, the mark of God's uh, ownership of His creation and that God is our Creator and that God is our Redeemer and God, God is the one who, who cares for us. God is the one who loves us. And so this is the command from the Lord. Because he said, remember, and we, we should not forget. Verse number 12, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Friends, this, is, this commandment is also important for us because this comes from the words of God. This is not just the writings of Moses. This is from the words of God himself based in verse number 1. And God spake. All these words, this is not just man-made. This is what God had spoken. I don't need to put in some more text or verses here. All I need to do is just read it to you and tell you and convince you and persuade you that God spoke or spake all these words that I'm reading to you, my friends. And God said, Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord 
thy God giveth thee. Friends, couldn't we understand what what God is trying to to say to us or trying to 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 uh, tell us what to do in order for us to have a, a a longer, a meaningful life of existence? Our parents. Our parents include God the Father. Our parents include our original parents, Adam and Eve. Our parents are also our immediate father. Our parents are also our grandfathers or grandparents. Our our immediate Fathers or mothers are those who are, are those who are taking care of us, not necessarily biological, but those who are close to us. Let us honor those people who are ahead of us in the faith, those who have been blessed by God and those who have been who had led us to the faith. Friends, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long, not only our earthly father, but also those whom we consider our fathers, and our mothers. Friends, again, let me reiterate to you, I'm just reading because in verse 1 it says, God spake all these words saying, whether you believe this or not, this is what God has spoken. And believe it, billions of people doesn't even want to read this, doesn't even want to understand this, and doesn't even want to apply this. Yes, they will say, I have applied all the ninth commandment, but I will not apply the tenth. I cannot apply the tenth because the other church tells me otherwise. Or some people they don't know. They thought they are they are fulfilling the commands of God, but they were deceived and misled. Friends, it's time for us to awaken our minds are the final battleground for the supremacy between Christ and the Antichrist. And the Protestant world is being disseminated right now because the Antichrist is already healed. His arms, his wounds are already healed. And he is quietly, supremely gathering all his forces, the media, the movies, the music, Everybody, the tech guys, the government, even the arms industries, even the politicians, they all bow down. And one of these all bow down to that supreme power of the earth in Vatican. And one of these days, its ugly head will again repeat the history, the bloody history that this church had done for the sake of of becoming the supreme controller of my of minds of hearts and wills of people could you not understand friends this is not about hate this is not about telling you what to do this is about the issue here is in verse 1 of chapter 20 God spake all these words so what are we going to do with these words because God spoke this but many millions and many billions and trillions and gazillions so to speak of people does not understand that this comes from the mind or from the words of God this is the sad reality that we are facing right now this is a lamentable situation that we are we are facing in in our time and even amongst those who profess to understand chapter 3 20 of Exodus. Sad to say, dearly beloved, sad to say that we have also been misled. The Bible tells us this is God's words. And so I'd like to continue reading in verse number 13. Thou shall not kill. God opened this up so that we will understand that killing is not only killing other people physically, but also in all the other aspects, all spectra spectrums of, of, of killing hatred in our minds unforgiving spirit and even in our lust uh, in even in our in our desire to to destroy somebody that's already technically hating in our hearts and even we we are also told not to kill ourselves that's why friends this church that i have served served for so many years in my life that had even left me behind to to you know to face all the scrutiny and the injustices friends even this church does not even believe in the message some of us does not even believe in the message that that is being implied in this words from the from God himself thou shall not kill 
The reason why we should not kill ourselves is because if we kill ourselves, friends, God will not be able to fellowship with us anymore. God will not be able to, to, to we will not be able to worship God in more in obedience and in loving, loving, um, t- tender, tender love with, for Him and with Him. Friends, thou shall not kill. Verse number 14, I'm just reading the words of God. Thou shall not commit adultery now, now we all understand this the media is all over this the the movies the media, the the music is all over this they would like us to be lustful to be adulterous in not only in our spiritual lives but also in our physical lives this is what's happening hypocrisy in the church because people who judge other people who are that are fornicating are are they themselves adulterous friends so many hypocrites but the Bible says, thou shall not commit adultery, not only physically with those who are, you know, married, that those who are, thou shall, not, thou shall only be faithful to your uh, committed partner, uh, committed uh, husband or wife in your, in your life, but also spiritually, we should not be committing spiritual adultery. That's what the Bible is trying to say, friends. Thou shall not do this, because you know why? I have a very simple reason. These words was spoken by God Himself. Believe it or not, these words were spoken by God. And I said, this makes perfect, absolute sense. If you read the first verse, the next few verses, the 25 verses that follow in chapter 20 is just going to be a a command of love for us to worship and be obedient to God and to respect and be loving to one another. We all know this, but that's why I'm just just reading this to you again. Thou shall not commit adultery. People of God, listen to this. Verse number 15, thou shall not steal. In our time, we should also consider that there are many people who are in need of help we should not steal from those people we should not steal from 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 the church we should not steal from anybody from other people because we are being told we have been commanded thou shall not steal friends this is the words of god verse number 16 thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor let me ask you this question there are so many intrigues and scandals in the church because of false accusations if we will not stop this friends if we will not repent from what we are doing believe it or not from my own perspective i do not believe that you understand that you are obeying the words of god because this is absolutely spoken by god himself to you to you and to me this is personal all of these words that i've been telling you comes from the mouth of god and later on if you read through it is written from the fingers of god meaning to say all of these are the seal from the from the signature of god these are all the the testing truths that we are going to face in the judgment bar of heaven when we will be when we are going to face that judgment thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor friends right now our church is obviously divided there are churches suing each other there are churches that are heavily fighting for supremacy there are churches i'm talking about my own church that i have served for so long in my professional career there are so many churches that they don't even care for all, for other church members all they care about is what they can get from the church let me tell you this is the words of god let us stop what we are doing that is not in accordance to the words of god stop it because we need to repent it's a high time for us to get out of Egypt and as we journey into the wilderness experiences in our own lives and as we are approaching the eternal home, the, 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 the Canaan promised land, so to speak, of heaven, let us 
be reminded that this was spoken of by God because he has a reason why he spoke this. Verse number 17, Thou shall not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shall not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservants, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is in thy neighbor's. Friends, this is again from the words of God. This was spoken by the words of God. My sinful mouth is just reading the words of God. How much more convincing or persuading. And if you don't believe it, friends, it is up to you. This is from the words of God Himself. Let me read to you again verse 1 of chapter 20. And God spake all these words. Many of us only listen to those whom we respect. Those people who gave us favors. We listen to those people who gave, who we feel like they are, they care for us. They, they, they look into our we welfare. Especially when they gave us some money or funds or whatever. Favors. But how much more God, He spoke these words. He is the one who truly cares for our salvation. He is the one who truly loves us. He is the one who gave His Son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Later on, as you read through all the, all the other chapters here until you finish the Holy Bible, the King James Version Bible, how much more God who gave His only begotten Son. And He spoke these words the world tells us that these are the ten commandments but i would like to emphasize to you today this is god's own original words and these was given from the fingers of god himself the signature of god and was given to us in a tablet of stones meaning to say this is forever it means we need to understand why where god is coming from why he spoke these words he spoke these words because he wants us from darkness to light from egypt to heaven from egypt to promised land from from wrong to right from bad to good from evil to being God's people from worst to the best this is the reason why God spake this he wants he wants he needs us to be in our best uh, best possible mindset because the whole point why why God himself spake this and eventually wrote this is because he loves us and we we obey we listen to someone not because he is powerful or he is he is uh, popular or he is somebody that we look up into but he is someone who loves us personally and that's the whole point of Exodus chapter 20 because God is love no other else God is love that doesn't mean he is weak God is love that means he is a judge God is love that means he could speak to you to us to you and me so that we will understand his commands because if we truly love God we will obey him and that's the whole point of this reading and our minds need to understand our frontlets our frontal lobes our decision making must un must be must be give must be given that lens to see through the motives of God everything here is about God's love for us if you try to examine all the words all the things that God is speaking to us, it's all about righteousness to love God and to love others so that we will have 
blessedness, happiness, and joy in our lives. Please, friends, catch this. God is the one who spoke this out of the abundance of His heart of love. He told us, Exodus 20, please read it for yourself. But the problem is this. We have an enemy in this world in the form of a political, civil, religious power. And we are being deceived because they control everything. And we who are obedient to God and we who are God's children, we are going to have a rough, difficult time sooner than all of us think. We will be hated by billions of people. We will be hated by all nations. It's not paranoia, friends. It's the truth. It's the truth, my friends, whether you like it or not. Billions of people will just crush and pressure those who obey God's, especially God's commandments, especially the ones that's, that were spoken by God Himself, believe it or not. So what should we do? What should we do? We continue to obey and respect and worship God Himself alone. Friends, if we follow this, we will be willing to give our worship to God and our love for our fellow men. Verse number 18, and this is the part that probably some of us, if not all of us, have not really read through because we only stop there. We call it the 10th commandment and we stop there. But I would like to emphasize verse 1, and God spake all these words. This is God's word. And now verse 18. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. Meaning to say, friends, they were, they were given this, this cataclysmic sight to behold. The, probably the volcanoes are erupting and there's rumblings all over, natural upheavals in their midst. But there is that trumpet and there is that voice. Verse 19, And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Wow! 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 With a bang! Why? Why did I say that, friends? If you read verse 19 carefully, if you understand it just uh, by hearing it or probably reading it with me, nobody can stand, even God's own elect people, nobody can stand the voice of God. The roarings, the holiness of God's voice. That's why they desire Moses to speak instead because they could not stand and they know that they will die from the holiness of God. Much like when Jesus Christ will come from that eastern sky that all, all people will see Him one of these days. They could not, those billions of people, they could not stand the glory, the lightnings. They could not stand because they feel that they will die by the righteousness, the holiness, and the love of God. Because they don't have the love of God in their hearts. Because you know why? They don't even understand with their minds the words that Jesus spoke. Friends, very, very clearly saying here, the reason why God spoke this is for people to understand how holy it is for us to observe and to meditate day and night, worship day and night, rereading day and night, not just once, twice, but throughout our lifetime, that this was spoken by God. God spake all these words, much like Jesus spake all the words that He had spoken in the New Testament. And this is the foundation 
that we we need to put in our minds our hearts and even our might and even our strength and even our soul because friends God spoke this a holy God spoke this and God will not allow us not to hear his words he will use nature he will use nature to grab our attention so that we will hear his words verse number 20 and Moses said unto the people fear not for God is come to prove you and that his fear may be before your faces that you sin not oh hallelujah this is a great news a great news after all those loving commands of God because God would like to prove us because his command is about love and love covers all sins the multitudes of sins and God would like to desire us not to commit sin by hearing and obeying his words but the man of sin the man of perdition before Jesus Christ will come as what Paul had prophesied will appear just before the second coming of Christ now we know for those of us who study the Bible that the man of sin the anti Messiah the anti God the anti Christ the anti righteousness the great deceiver the father of lies has already had put his his power amongst us and we are seeing it right now as they control the minds of people billions of people around us as I've said the minds our minds will be the final battleground in this last days and Exodus 20 just confirmed it friends if we obey the words of God if we love if we have love in our hearts there is no sin because love covers multitude of sin if we truly love God we truly love our fellow men there is no sin the problem is we go to church we continue to sin and we feel we think we understand but we don't really because our minds are marred by other 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 distractions our minds are marred by fundraising our minds are are marred or are hazed or are clouded by pleasure by entertainment by pleasure by the god of hedonistic activities by the god of idolatrous relationship by the god who desires for self supremacy rather than the supremacy of god who sent his son jesus christ the messiah christ should be the supreme head in our minds he's the supreme uh, God that we need to understand in our minds friends the Bible is very clear that if we obey that if we follow and worship God God will prove us and that his fear may be before our faces as we tremble upon a holy God so that we will not sin we will not dare commit killings whether by hatred by jealousy or envy we will not dare commit lust fornication and adultery all of these are deviant deviant attitude we will not dare steal corrupt embezzle we will not dare uh, uh, fraud defraud or or scam others we will not dare gossip bear false witness we will not dare uh, malign other people's reputation we will not dare judge misjudge the others whom we have not even proven and we will be very fair and hopeful that God himself will be the best judge of all of us all if if we understand God's motivation behind we will not be greedy in this time before we approach the final resting place the final place that God has assigned us or destined us friends could you not understand that God's desire is for us to hear him speak his words 
God spoke, what do you do about it? God spake, what shall we do about it? Verse number 21 of chapter 20 of Exodus from the King James Version Bible. And the people stood afar, afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. Only Moses was allowed. Only Moses, God's um, servant, was allowed to come near in the presence of verse number 22 and the Lord said unto Moses thou thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven Ooh. Moses who is a witness right now in heaven he represents the words of God to his people not only the law but he represents the words of God spoken to his people verse number 23 listen to this because God has spoken and God has a witness Moses and the people saw it and they don't want to die that's why they just want to hear Moses instead of God listen to this friends verse number 23 you shall not make with me gods of silver Neither shall you make unto you gods of gold. Why did God mention the currency of his time, silver and gold? Very clear, very, very plain, very understandable. God said, do not make with me gods of silver and gods of gold. Meaning to say, friends, it's my it's my righteousness that can only hold you together not the righteousness of your own doing it's not your might it's not your power it's my might god said god declare it is my power and it is my spirit that will tell you what to do because if we rely on the god of silver the gods of silver and the gods of gold that is a human human claim righteousness friends and that is anti god anti christ and anti worship because we rob god of his creatorship we would like to create our own gods so that's why god spoke explicitly ye shall not make with me with me gods of silver neither shall make unto you gods of gold verse number 24 an altar of earth thou shalt make unto me and shalt sacrifice therein thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings thy sheep and thy oxen in all places where i record my name i will come unto thee and i will bless thee friends instead god wants us god wants his people in that time to understand that in order for us to in order for 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 god's people to be redeemed and to embrace the righteousness of god there must be a holy sacrifice there must be somebody who will take his or her place in the altar of earth an altar of earth there should be a sacrifice a prelude to what the New Testament will will be giving us and that is the sacrifice of God's only Son the Messiah Jesus Christ because God will bless us if we do these things verse number 25 and if thou wilt make me an altar of stone thou shalt not build it of hewn stone for if thou lift it up thy tool upon it thou hast polluted it not a single man-made object even carved by the best hands must be allowed to set up that altar it must be from the from the creatorship of god himself it is from the from the power of god himself meaning to say it is not the righteousness of human humankind it is not the the power of humankind that we need to set up this altar that god has given us because if we if we make gods of silver 
and gods of gold it comes from the hands of a sinful man but if you if you follow and obey god's prescription or god's mandated um, design it comes from the word of god that we obey so righteousness of god versus the righteousness of man friends righteousness by faith that works versus righteousness of works and boasting friends clear this is the words of god in the new testament it will be echoed by the words of his son jesus the messiah the problem is we don't understand because our minds are are being distracted today our minds are the battleground and if we don't be if we are not careful i mean with how to take care of our minds we will not fully understand the words that was spoken to us by god verse number 26 the last verse 25 is very important it's about not doing it from the from the hands calling it righteousness by the hands of man it's the righteousness from the mouth of god and we obey from the words of god himself righteousness by faith that works that obeys that's what it means versus righteousness by works not based on faith but by boasting self and exalting self supremacy verse number 26 neither shalt thou go up by steps unto mine altar that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon friends only god is supreme that's the fact of this verse only god whether you are an atheist agnostic or or just unaware that there is god or or you're just you don't ignore you're just ignorant you don't know what to do go back pick up your bible read exodus chapter 20 very critical very important friends because the first verse is telling us that these were spake uh, or spoken or spake by the words of god these words that i have the Ten Commandments, they call it, but I have read it to you from Exodus 20, comes from the words of God. And the last verse is telling us, neither shall thou go up by steps unto my God's altar. Meaning to say, friends, we cannot elevate or ascend any form of human righteousness. It's only the righteousness from the words of God. And that word, is Jesus Christ in the New Testament and that words is Jesus himself who spoke this in Exodus 20 God was the the one who spoke these words and let me tell you the truth friends he is the same God who spoke the words in the gospel the same God who created us the same God who spoke the time when God's people were delivered from Egypt to the promised land until the time of God himself who became a man who led his people from darkness to light to our time Jesus Christ is coming his word says so and he will lead us to the heavenly home prepared for those who love his appearing and who love his coming friends what are we going to do with the words of god in exodus 20. does that give you does this give you an awakening an alarm bell ringing in your ear today to understand that we are being pulled and pushed and pressured by the world that's why listen to me that's why we should not exalt any human even human righteousness in the altar of God no way that's why friends we are being told 
idolatry let us let us have no connection with idolatry let us hate the idols of this world let us let us destroy in our hearts and our minds the desire for self idolatry loving our own logic loving our own splendidness loving our own uh, education loving our own um, loving our own self that we need to exalt ourselves in the altar of God no way we should not this is the words of God in Exodus chapter 20 that's why I'm reading to you from the King James Version Bible it's not the only versions out there but these versions that I'm that this version that I'm telling you friends is the version that I see fit in order for me to give you the insight that the supremacy that the battle for supremacy is raging in our minds is it self that is supreme is it the world that is supreme is it our logic that is supreme is it our education that is supreme is it our 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 career that is supreme is it our our bank account that is supreme or even those whom we influence supreme friends only god is supreme and when we understand with our minds that God is supreme, we will listen, we will obey, we will, we will bow down to Him only. So friends, the side of God is clear. Righteousness by faith that works righteousness versus the side of the Antichrist, the devil, the enemy of God, the father of lies people who are taking the power of God and and pretending to be God's spokesperson in this earth they are not supreme the Roman Catholic papacy he is not supreme God is supreme he may look humble now he was evil some of them were evil before they may look deceptive today but the Word of God is telling us what to do and we should not follow what they are saying to us. The battlefield, friends, is open. It's between our faithfulness to God and to men. The battlefield right now, as we prepare, is Saturday, Seventh day Sabbath, and Sunday, first day of the week. It's not about the day, Saturn's day or Sunday. It's about God's word versus man's word who is supreme in our minds it is about the battlefield is about choosing whether this is convenient or this is comfortable no this is not about convenient or comfort being comfortable this is about obe obedience to the commands of god because he spoke the words so saturday versus sunday clear even if you examine the pioneers of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, clear, non-negotiable, absolute Sabbath is an absolute test of faith between righteousness, faith that produces righteousness, that works righteousness versus righteousness by works, Sunday, man-made, supremacy. I, I hope you're getting what I'm trying to throw to you today. Saturday versus Sunday, worship. Remember, this is the words of God. It's about, it's about obedience, friends. It's about giving our minds and our hearts who to worship. That is the whole point of this chapter in Exodus 20. Is it papal supremacy, which, sad to say, the Jesuits had been very successful kudos to them to reintroduce papal supremacy the media mass media love papal supremacy the governments love papal supremacy left-leaning politicians love papal supremacy billions of people love supremacy the tech giants the richest people love the people supremacy but the bible is the bible is very clear my friends the bible is very clear God is supreme, no other. God is supreme. And do you know who God is so created as? Jesus, the Messiah of the Old Testament. Jesus, the Messiah. 
of the New Testament. Let me repeat it. Who is our God? Jesus, the maker of the Old Testament. Jesus, the Messiah of the New Testament. Jesus Christ was the one who spoke Exodus 20. He created me. He created you. And He was the one who spoke the words. That's why He dared say amongst those who listen to say, If you love me, keep my commandments. That's why He could dare say, If you love me, Jesus said, keep my commandments. Listen to Moses, to the law, and to the testimony of Moses. I am the one who said those words. Friends, if you love Jesus Christ, your minds, our minds will be clearer. Our hearts will be pure. Our strength will be steadfast. We will just love the words of Jesus Christ in our time. We will hate the world in our time. We will hate self-supremacy because we have only one supreme and that is Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. He's our God. Do you not understand, friends, why I'm harping this, why I'm drifting Exodus 20? I know you know, but have you read it through? We read it through again. Have you conditioned your minds that this is the battleground? Someday, someday there will only be few. Because the Bible is replete of stories that tell us few people who made it. Noah had only eight. Abraham has only Lot, his wife, but his wife turned to the world, became a pillar of salt. His two daughters, 300 men, Gideon has 300 men. Jesus has only 12 disciples. Narrow the way that leads to life, broad is the way that leads to destruction. So those of us who are few in numbers, listen Jesus Christ had spoken. He is supreme in our minds. He is supreme in, our, in my mind and in my heart. That's why I could dare say this. And I would like to say that I love the Lord Jesus no matter what other people will say. Because I want Him to prove me so that I will fear Him. Fear Him, the, what King James Version say, fear Him. You can call it respect Him, whatever, be all inspired. But I want to fear my God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the fear of God will lead me not to commit sin against Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, I thank you that in your altar tonight, no man, no righteous man, no man must go up, ascend to be put in a pedestal Lord only Jesus the Messiah the God the maker of us all deserve to be in that altar he sacrificed his love his life I mean because he loved us he sacrificed his life as a symbol before in the Old Testament so that we who believe in God who believe that God the Father sent Jesus the Christ, who spoke the words in Exodus 20, will sin not and exalt. Christ is supreme. That's it. Christ is supreme. Father in heaven, not self-supreme, not papal supreme, not world supreme, but Christ only is supreme. Bless your word, and may we keep it in our hearts and our minds. Take care of our minds, Lord. Take care of what we feel, we think, and we do. Take care of our words, that we may not commit sin against you. In Jesus Christ, the only supreme God in our hearts, 
in our minds. Live forever and may come again soon. In His name I pray. Amen. And amen.